The things we put in our food are actually stunning. It's shocking to me that so many things get in what we put on our mouth or we put on our skin that are toxic to the human body and tests aren't done to show whether they're safe or not. The FDA simply doesn't have the manpower, simply doesn't have the interest, and simply is in bed with the pharmaceutical industry and with the American Chemical uh, Society. It's amazing how this is getting into our bodies and it's causing problems. It has a lot to do with the epidemic of chronic diseases that we face every day. And there's stuff we could do about it, but we don't take enough care about it because what we're concerned about more than anything else is what our stockholders think. Is there enough return on investment? Yes, we can take a risk. It may be small, hopefully small, and it won't hurt a lot of people. But what we find out after weeks, months to years, or even decades later, is that almost everything we put in the human body that shouldn't be there or isn't there naturally causes problems. And what's come out in the news now? Artificial butter flavoring has been linked to Alzheimer's disease. My God. This compound that's in there is called diacetyl, and it's responsible for that buttery flavor that's in margarine and microwave popcorn and snacks and candy and baked goods and pet food, and we're putting it into our body. It turns out that this particular problem, this diacetyl compound, is linked to respiratory problems in the factories where people who are making this product work. It's causing respiratory problems and it's causing changes in their brains. It turns out that this chemical crosses the blood-brain barrier and it damages proteins that protect nerve cell against toxicity. So we wind up with damaged nerves. It actually causes clumping uh, of, of a compound called beta amyloid in the brain, which is characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. So it could be that to flavor our butter, uh, or to flavor our popcorn with butter, to flavor our wines, okay, and beers with that, may have a consequence that's devastating. Now, we know in the case of fermented drinks like beer and wine, that this compound is made naturally by the fermenting process but it still doesn't mean because it was made naturally that it's good for us. And at the same time, you have to wonder if some of those buttery Chardonnays have diacetyl put in them. So it's a big issue. And this opens Pandora's box for what other things are coming into our body that are causing changes like this that are making us sick. How about the paradins and the, and the formaldehydes? How about the sodium lauryl sulfate? Uh, the petroleum and mineral oils that are on our skin and in so many cosmetic products. How about the phthalates and the polyvinyl propylene that, that is in plastics that we're, we're consuming? And the synthetic fragrances and the talcum powder. All these things that we're putting on our body that we don't have information that's sufficient to tell us that this is not going to cause a problem. Like a neurological defect or a birth defect or some kind of cancer. We have to go back, I think, to some of the thinking we had years ago where if it looks like food, eat it. If it looks like a cantaloupe or a watermelon or like a zucchini or a piece of broccoli, it's probably healthy. We've been eating that for tens of thousands of years, and it's good for us. When we see packaged foods, it's got cellophane around it. It doesn't look like any kind of food you recognize, and it's got a long list of ingredients on it that has some of these compounds in them that we don't that, that we don't no, are safe, why would we want to even use them? It's just common sense that we should be avoiding things like that and staying close to nature. It's terrible we find out 50 years later that something we've been using all along turns out not to be safe, and the FDA hasn't done anything about it. We need to tighten up our laws at the FDA. We need to get rid of the conflicts of interest. We need to have them be a separate independent organization that doesn't depend on the financing or support of any industry that's making products that are synthetic. If we can do that and we use our common sense and if we can start taking more responsibility as, as corporations to only be involved with natural things as, as much as possible or else at least test them completely. Until we do that, we're going to be subject to things like this going to have to stick to more natural things, stay away from the things that are untested, and maybe, just maybe, we'll live a life that has a lot fewer in the way of chronic diseases.